Hi, welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to show you the basic techniques I've learned for mastering audio. Uh, the first thing to do when mastering is to listen to the track a few times and make sure you're familiar with it. When you listen to the track, you need to decide what you want to achieve with the mastering. Generally, you want to raise the volume of the track without distorting it or crushing the dynamics. And you usually want to bring out the parts of it that you like and push back the parts you don't like. And it's a bit like mixing, but you need to be trying not to correct the mix, you just want to emphasize the good parts of the track. Um, and you want to put, you want to be putting the track in a space. Uh, you can do this using reverb or EQ or whatever, but you need to tie all the elements of the track together and make it sort of cohesive. Um, if you have a bad mix to start with, you can end up with a bad master, so get the mix right first. The track I've chosen for this video is about a minute long, so I'll play it through once now, but after that you'll just hear it as I work on it. I'm going to be using Cubase in this video, but you can use any sequencer that supports plugins. Uh, you also need some plugins. I'm going to be using Ozone 4. There are many free plugins out there. Some are good, some are bad. I can recommend classic plugins. It's uh, I can't remember who made them, but the, I'll post the link in the video. Um, there's a reverb, an EQ, um, I think there's a limiter as well, and some others and uh, you can chain them together using the sends in your mixer and uh, achieve the same effect that I'm going to achieve here with Ozone. Uh, you can see I've got five tracks here and one group channel. I usually only have a single stereo file when mastering. I'm using stereo stems here so I can solo parts to show you what I'm working on but in the mixer I'll only be working on the master bus so it's as if I'm working with a single file. So I'm going to open the mixer and here's the bus and I'm going to add an instance of Ozone. Here's the classic plugins I was talking about earlier. I'm going to use a preset to start with. Uh, I find they're a good starting point. Uh, for this track I think I'll use the CD Master. So I'll just click OK on that. And if I bypass this and unbypass it, you'll be able to hear the difference that just adding this preset makes to the track. So already there you can hear the difference that makes. Uh, the first thing I use when I'm doing a mastering is the EQ. And if I just reset this from the preset, uh, I'm using this guide here. This is a 6 decibel guide. It's uh, used in a lot of commercial music, although it does have a tendency to make the music sound a bit thinner, but that can soon be corrected. And in Ozone, you get this guide up just by clicking that show button there. And the next thing I want to do is you can get Ozone to analyse your track and make an EQ fingerprint called a snapshot. And then you can tell Ozone to make your track match the grey guide here. To do that, you have to play the track through. And you see that green line that popped up? That's Ozone analysing the track. And then after the track, it'll sort of, after the track's played, it'll kind of balance out and you just click the purple button there and it'll make a purple guide or that button will make a yellow guide and um, then you change this to matching and it'll change the EQ curve to match your track so I'm gonna play that track through now and uh, take a snapshot so this purple line here is what Ozone has analyzed from the track and this red line is the current EQ settings so if we click this button here, we change it to matching, 
you can see it pulls the EQ up and pushes it down as needed so that um, the EQ matches this guide here and if I play that back and just bypass and unbypass this you'll be able to hear the difference the EQ makes <laughs> So the difference is subtle, but um, it is there and it brightens up the track a bit. Right, next I'm going to use the mastering reverb. And uh, this isn't meant to be used as an effect like you would during mixing. It should be used to place the track in a space and tie everything together. I find the best way to use this is to add a lot of reverb and then reduce it until you can hardly tell it's there. And you can adjust these settings as well, but for now I'm just going to uh, stick to the default. So again, it's a subtle difference, it just ties everything together nicely. Okay, arguably the most important element of mastering is raising the volume. Uh, you can increase the volume using EQ or compression, um, but at some stage in the chain you need to use a limiter. Uh, Ozone has a brilliant limiter called the Loudness Maximizer. For this track I'm going to use the default mode, but you can see here there are several including uh, brick wall and uh, soft which you can use. I'm going to use Intelligent 2. When using the limiter, lowering the threshold will increase the volume of the track. Uh, the margin is the maximum volume the track will be. The default in Ozone is minus 0.3 decibels. So when using a limiter, um, or in this case a loudness maximizer, you want to play the track back the loudest part. So if I just highlight this section here. That's not bad for the loudest part of the track. You'll notice there was a little bit of clipping, but not that much. So I'm going to leave the threshold at 6.3. And if I play a quieter part of the track, you can hear how it raises the volume. But it stops it clipping. Um, next, I'm going to use the multi band harmonic exciter, which is a very clever effect that can add a bit of brightness and sparkle to the track. Uh, it can also be used to tweak certain frequencies like uh, bring out the bass more up. Um, in this case what I'm trying to do if I solo the try and bring out that clicking some more. Also, in Ozone, enable um, an extra band and have four bands. Right, I'm quite happy with that. I'm not going to use any compression on this track. We actually have some default compression at the moment, so I'm not going to change the compression. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, in Ozone, it's called multiband dynamics, but it is essentially a compressor. The last thing I'm going to use is the multiband stereo imaging, which is just a stereo widener, really. This can be used to thin out or fatten up the master and it can, oh, well its main purpose is to give balance between the left and right.
Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So now I'll bounce it to disk. I'm going to bounce the track to 16 bits. So I'll use Ozone's built in dither. And uh, yeah, I'll bounce that down. Sort of hear the difference that the mastering's made to it. <laughs> So you can hear it's uh, really brightened up the track, it's brought out that clicking noise I wanted to get at, it's um, spread the stereo image between the speakers, made it, giving it a really full sound without making it heavy in the bass. Uh, so that was a very basic look at mastering. I didn't go into too much detail of any of the tools, but if you'd like me to go into anything in a bit more detail, just put a comment in the box below and I'll see if I can do something more in depth. Um, if you'd like to hear the master and unmastered version of those tracks, I'll uh, post them somewhere and I'll stick a link on this video. Um, also, if you get a chance, please visit my website. It's www.totalcomposure.com. And thank you for watching.